Hello, um, this is Kelvin again from uh, Donaco Analytics. So I have uh, created another video just uh, to emphasize on some things which are very important in R. So lesson one, we covered introduction um, uh, where we were able to define the uh, R Studio download and install the R and R Studio. We were also able to see the major parts of R studio and then um, installing packages so when you're installing a package um, ensure that you use the right code and uh, install the right package ensure that you're using the right package if you have to use a, a, a package um, ensure that you come here and uh, if you have to install now you uh, for example uh, it's loading later uh, there so you're supposed to type uh, the package and then if it comes if if it doesn't come there know that you've typed the wrong package for me right now i'm not connected to the internet that's why it is not coming but it should come so after the after you've typed some letters and then uh, the package appears uh, uh, for you to select select it and then uh, uh, install the package that is very important and ensure that uh, you've libraried your package um, let me open a, a new script so how do we assess the services of a package ensure you have uh, um, libraried the package so that you can use that package now no so that when uh, for example you have uh, DBLYR, ah, it's there. So, for example, let us take uh, uh, this one, a bid. Well, if we want to use a bid, we just library a uh, bid. So, when we run that one, you see it is ticked. You can detach it by ticking it. Also, you can uh, library it by ticking it there. No, uh, there's no problem about that. Another thing I wanted to emphasize on, I have emphasized um, on the data types. Please, understand the data types. Is it a vector? Is it a matrix? Is it a data frame? Is it a list? Mm, how to create a variable? Know that, um, for example, if I have created my data, let me say x data frame, data dot frame, sorry so we we'll have uh, uh, names is equals concrete uh, veronica mm, john we send mahan So, and I create another one, uh, location. Uh, it, how many are these? Three. Uh, so I will say US. Uh, I will say UK. I will also say uh, Africa. So that's it. Um, I want you to look at this. So my my data frame will be created there. X. Then when I run X, it's there. Suppose I come and uh, allocate my X as uh, another data. Say, twelve forty-five that we that way. So. What R does, it will forget the other X and then bring out this X. Remember that this is, you create an X with data frame, with names and location. And when you create an again here, yeah, um, when you create this new one, now uh, it seems that it has looped in the new one. 
So always when you want to create, for example, when you're analyzing data, be conscious So now you are creating a variable. Do not repeat a variable. For example, you want to slice data, you have sliced the data. Hmm? And then after you have sliced, you forgot the variable you gave that data and then you you use that variable again to create another it's like for example what you are uh, you you use that variable and create another data so uh, r will assume the newest variable assigned like this one now you can see it has assigned another one so always be cautious about that one and um, it, it will be well with you ensure so you use the right arithmetic operator or uh, arithmetic operator or or logic operator when you are doing a, um, when you're operating on vectors and uh, matrices and uh, all those uh, also in the creation of matrix ensure that you have a, uh, uh, say for example I wanted to create a matrix here ensure that you have created uh, the right matrix if you want to put the end row you put the end row c4 and then uh, by by row equals let me see true let me see what is here So can run X. We see now. It has 12, 43, 53, 65, 87, 6, 8, that 2. So if we hand by row force. Total of 87, 43, 6. So it is running as total of 43, or they are running it this way. Uh, so you need to be cautious when you are, you know, putting all these uh, command, a wrong command, a wrong answer. So always uh, take caution, understand your matrix, understand the dimension, and then put the dimension there. If you put the dimension, then everything will be right with you so slicing a matrix ensure that you've sliced after slicing now you have to look at your matrix how does it look like so that uh, you are not using uh, another matrix in another things another thing i wanted to um, uh, basically expand expound on is the factor use of factor mostly you'll find uh, this data all over especially this you'll be interacting with it a lot of time because now you'll be given um, for example a uh, data which contains male and female that is a factor so male and female you have to know how you you, you level them how you will put input them um, how you want them to be for example like that data we talked about iris iris data uh, if you and uh, bracket iris and uh, we choose uh, species you see uh, no okay uh, no I use table as you can see now uh, they are okay even this one as you can see here uh, there are levels setosa vesicola and vaginica so always that data is you will always interact with such data and always uh, be cautious on on factors um yes so that uh, it will be good with you remember that uh, with the factors uh you are able to organize your data well and uh, and um uh, be able to see which data belongs to which remember that uh, you have to you know understand categorical uh, uh, and continuous variable
categorical and continuous variable. Ensure that all the time, all the time that you are, uh, uh, all the time that you are using uh, data, you have understood. Um, let me see this one. Let me see how, how empty cast looks like. Uh, I want to put that one there. See now it's numeric. This one is numeric. So always understand how your data is. Yeah. Checking the data, um, the uh, what what does it belong? You put class class then the data set that you want the row the row that you want or the data the row that you want or the data. So always uh, um, do that so that you can see. Uh, uh, how the data is so and data frame uh, always understand how to create a data frame on normal cases uh, you'll be you'll be given a data and for you to analyze because now we are working to you are a data scientist so what 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 you are you're presented with a problem that you're supposed to analyze and you get data um, R is uh, let's talk about list. Um, uh, list now it contains uh, most of them like vector, you know, uh, matrix, uh, data frame, all of them in the list. So you need to understand how to sort, how to uh, um, to manipulate a list, like sorting. Uh, you want uh, to see. Uh, which one was on top, which one was uh, 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 good, um, such things, you'll be able to see them. Um, uh, so there's this use of this powerful package is called DPLYR, which is, uh, which has, uh, um, which is mostly used in data analysis. So the procedure for data analysis is one, data manipulation, where we talked about um, where you can join the uh, rows or columns. You can also through right join, left join, semi join, anti join. For example, you like the data we had for movies and producers. We want to see for producers, oh, okay, like for example, let me give another example. <laughs> Uh, we say um, the HR manager uh, wants to uh, ask the data that uh, uh, um, ask the data of the salaries of the employees, and then uh, he asked the employees uh, employees uh, also uh, data on. Uh, on their responsibilities and duties, um, he has the uh, uh, a folder which has what the employees uh, uh, when the employee came in the morning and when uh, uh, he left in the evening. For example, if there is a check-in point, most of the companies have a check-in point. Uh, uh, so the HR uh, has all that data. But then, the the the, the manager, the, the or the department head, does not have uh, probably that is is not able to assess the salary of this person. Does not know because when this person came in and when he checked out, uh, for example, at the gate now is where this person check in, check checks in and when checks out. So this data is uh, has it is stored by the. Uh, gate man or the person at the gate. So all this data, the HR has to get so that you, he or she will be able to analyze that data. And how do we do it? You get data from uh, all those sources and then right join, left join, semi join, and join, all of them, the way you want them to be, to the way you want the data to become, the way, the way you want to, uh, to organize your data. So after you manipulate it, now you have the whole data now. You can start cleaning the data, assessing, uh, people who come uh, at work late and leave early, 
you can uh, see a uh, uh, employees payment who is paid highly now that is a HR manager who is paid lowly um, you can also see the duties and you know all those things which duties overlap so that is cleaning the data after you've cleaned the data uh, probably you don't want uh, information about the uh, um, uh, gatemen or watchmen employed by the organization you want uh, um, information about the managers or just one department which is a hospitality department or a data department uh, how are they paid what are their roles you know so he has to look at that analyze that data uh, so that uh, it will look um, it will look presentable so that's why we use the filter and select arrange uh, mutate and group by um, all that way to clean the data or that way to clean the data so uh, lesson four we used the merging merging we have talked about it you may merge data from all those sources so that it is it is, uh, it is good uh, it is will be good for analyzing um, like for the example for the HR manager who wants to assess uh, uh, how people are paid in the organization well, lastly we looked at functions uh, functions we seen that some of them are inbuilt like math functions uh, like KBS absolute value uh, the other one is logarithm log log with an base uh, then x exponential square root factorial and then they are basic now statistical functions these ones we are going to use them extensively extensively we are going to use them we are so going to use them because as a data analyst you need to understand these things these ones so you will need to understand them as we are going on and um, um, I hope that you are able to you know get some data uh, summarize it go entire scale uh, find the standard deviation find the variance find the median find the mean all those things because these ones are inbuilt and now there are uh, functions which are not inbuilt and now we, we need to you know um, create them uh, well, we talked of uh, uh, a function that can uh, um, a function that can uh, split our data that function eh, um, is a very good function uh, it's a very good function that we create in there and um, you may want to understand why is this uh, thing doing uh, why are we using uh, splitting data in the first place uh, um, mm, our data at uh, some point you may be given data let's say uh, for for the you want to check um, mm, mostly uh, uh, how uh, will the organization which which inputs or which uh, for example let's say your organization is running on uh, a loss at a loss and you want to understand um, is it that we are making low sales is it that uh, we are paying workers or are we or are we overpaying them is it that um, or where is this loss coming from from is there some money lost uh, are we producing goods when uh, they are sold the money doesn't come to us money is lost along the way so you need to understand all those things uh, and try and build uh, uh, and look at what happens when uh, when you sell goods when when the goods are sold um, what if uh, mm, let's say that you have a lot of employees and uh, after paying them and then the company is running on a on a loss just a thought and then uh, you d you have now to analyze that for this company to produce what it's producing how many employees do we need for example you want uh, say 10 employees now and now uh, you need uh, after analyzing the data you need you see that 
official employees can run the work that these others were working if they are uh, if they are working from home. Let us say, uh, for example, an uh, uh, hiring consultancy. A consultancy, a firm that uh, uh, is a human resource based and uh, it works on hiring people. After paying the workers, the commission that they get as the company, it is paid to the uh, workers who come who, to the employees, uh, and then it is left uh, uh, with a loss. So we can analyze uh, how many one uh, how um, if one employee can hire, let's say, uh, uh, five people in a day within a span of uh, let's say eight hours and then there are for example you ten, you want 10 employees and uh, now this sums up to five employees uh, one one uh, in one scenario these are 10 employees and then 10 employees they are hiring um every every uh, uh in a day they are hiring uh, let's say 20 people for different organizations and then you understand that if i bring them to seven employees i can increase their salary by uh, encouraging them to work over time and then at least uh, one hour or two hours and then i find out that with these seven employees they can hire 21 people in a day so uh, there is no need of you running with uh, 20 people, uh, 10 people who are going to hire 20 people in a day and pay that salary. Whereas you can uh, reduce the number of people who are working and then uh, continue um, giving them uh, 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 overtime cash. So uh, I was just talking about that one when we wanted to look at data but usually splitting data it will help you uh, analyze for example that case of a uh, uh, um, consultancy which is um, which hires people uh, which has been contracted to hire people instead of the main so we want to look that uh, how stable is is this is this a uh, model that we have created for example we say we need seven people to hire 21 and people are comfortable and at some point you may you may you may you may consider it that way and then when the model when you use that model then you find people are getting tired far much tired and the the productivity is going down 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 so that's why we need to split the data into test and training set so that we, we use that model in the training when we go to test that model we test that model in the data so that we find how is our model now operating in real life situation how is it operating do we really need this model or it's, it is going to bring our our company down you know changing the management involves a lot if you try and change without information, that is the end of the company. We have heard about companies which have uh, deteriorated in their performance uh, uh, many cases. So it's a big deal. It's a big deal. So the strategic management comes with a model that uh, they, have, they have trained the model, they have tested the model, and the model is working perfect. So when the model is working perfect, that's when the organization can use that model. That is why we are splitting data and uh, into two parts, so that uh, because now um, suppose we didn't have this information, suppose that we didn't have this information, we may not go again and collect the data for for so that we can use for testing. You know, so training we use we assume that this now this is our data now. And then we have to test to see how is it performing at the outside world. Now the outside world which we don't know, which is now testing. So this is why we are doing the training and the test. Very important things. And uh, 
that is why when you go to propose a model uh, you will be asked is it tested has it been tested so it is important for you as a data scientist to you know uh, first organize yourself train the data test the data and then uh, give an outcome mm -hmm. so when you give an outcome um, depending on the output of the model you'll be able to analyze to, to now um, as a data scientist scientist to be able to um, uh, uh, advise strategic management these are the things that you are supposed to do if we reduce the uh, employees by this number this is the output if we increase the employees uh, salary they will be motivated to work at this point but only ensure that it is within two hours three hours because if they extend more tomorrow during the during the during their working hours they will not be productive they will be waiting for the um for the uh, additional hours over time so always be cautious and uh, organize those factors uh, together so when you have variables that is when you can be able to you know uh, uh, understand what the variables mean so i think uh, those are the most important things and uh, i wish you all the best let us meet some other time thank you